music. It was this time, it was like sort of late 70s, early 80s, New York, and the punk rock scene was just sort of still kind of happening. And seeing a band live and seeing women play really was the thing that made me like, oh, okay, this is something, I love music so much. I'm like obsessed with buying records and, and reading fanzines and all that stuff. And the, I think that the, the skill level required for that type of music was kind of low. So the, all those things, it was like a perfect storm of like, you can do this. In those days in, in England, most dramas, most rock and roll dramas that are in all these bands uh, that you know became famous, they started off playing Dixieland or Skiffle or, or jazz. They were all at it. Charlie Watts, Ginger Baker, Ian Pace, John Heisman. I mean, all these dramas basically used to do uh, dance gigs. So that's what I grew up playing. I, I turned professional when I was 12 years old. I joined my dad's band and he had about, uh, it was about a nine, 10 piece band. I was 13, 14 years old. I was playing with a lot of different people. By the time I got 16, uh, I played my first professional gig with uh, Roy Eldridge. And uh, it was like a club in town. They would bring musicians in. They would come in uh, singles, as singles. And they would look for rhythm sections. And at the, that time, I was 16, and I was good enough for them to call me, you know. But my father had to go along with me to the clubs because I was underage and stuff like that. But by the time I started playing with those guys, I knew that was that was it. That's what I was. That was the turning point. I was, you know, going to do that. <laughs> 